Show them the price of defying the Council. After playing through the first two chapters of Darksiders Genesis, my biggest takeaway is how decidedly unlike Diablo it actually is, despite how much like Diablo it looks. There's no gear, there's no level ups, no skill trees, there's a much more elaborate melee combat system with strong and weak attacks, and really, rather than reminding me of Diablo, it reminded me of the very first Darksiders game, just with a different perspective and a second playable character. <laughs> Of course, part of that likely has to do with the fact that in Darksiders Genesis, you can either choose to play as the protagonist of Darksiders 1, War, or his brother, the gun-wielding Strife, who finally makes his playable debut in a Darksiders game. There's a great split in the abilities and playstyles of the two characters, with War playing almost exactly like his Darksiders 1 counterpart, right down to having mostly the same moves and tools at his disposal. War can deal big melee damage by juggling opponents with air combos, utilize a crowd clearing AoE special move, and unlike Strife, he can block enemy attacks as well. Strife, on the other hand, has less HP than War, but what he lacks in tankiness, he makes up with sheer offensive output. He can blast enemies from a distance with his guns, and every hit he lands builds up a hot streak meter, which, when full, amplifies his already high DPS significantly by allowing him to fire faster and use fully charged shots instantly for a short period of time. He's no slouch in the melee range either. With quick strikes, the ability to run through enemies and leave a debuff on them, along with the unique trait of having two dashes to quickly dart away if need be. When playing in single player mode, you're able to switch between the two on the fly, with both characters having separate health bars. So if one character is looking rough, you can swap them out and give them a break. Beyond that though, there didn't seem to be much of a need to swap between them, with the exception of a scant few puzzle moments that required a piece of equipment unique to one character. I got to play the first two levels of the game in my demo, with the first offering up a large open battleground that encouraged a ton of exploration with collectibles and goodies strewn all throughout. Coins could be collected and spent at Vulgrim's store for various items and upgrades, trickster keys could be used to unlock special doors that would lead to treasure vaults, and optional upgrades could also be found that would give Strife a new ammo type or significantly alter War's charge attack. All in all, the rewards for exploration made it well worth the effort, and being able to seamlessly jump on and off your horse made the actual act of exploration a lot of fun. The second level was more of a traditional dungeon with some very light puzzle and platforming elements, including a central puzzle that had me going down the cardinal paths in order to unlock seals that connected back to the central room of the dungeon. Again, it's actually a bit surprising just how much Genesis feels like a traditional Darksiders game, despite the complete change in perspective. In lieu of a traditional level up system, character progression is handled via something called creature cores. As you defeat enemies, you'll be able to pick up their cores, which can then be slotted into an upgrade tree to gain whatever upgrade is stayed on the core. However, if you truly want to maximize your gains, you must carefully think about how you slot your cores. Each core belongs to one of three categories, attack, wrath, and health, and every slot also has the same distinction. You can slot any core into any slot, and by slotting a core, you unlock the adjacent ones, but if you're able to match the category of a core in a slot, you'll gain a matching bonus. The more you defeat enemies of the same type, the more creature cores you'll get, which will allow you to level up your cores and further improve the bonuses you get from them. It's an interesting system that sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is, and there's definitely some joy to be had in taking a few seconds to think about it, and then squeaking a few extra stat points out by optimizing your core placement. All in all, I came out of my demo of Darksiders Genesis excited and hungry for more. Despite its visual similarities to other isometric action games, this actually feels like the most unique Darksiders game yet. We'll see if the momentum will hold true for the full game when it releases on December 5th for PC, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Switch, and Stadia.